All right, welcome back. Now, if you've ever been on an airplane and wondered how uh, do, do pilots know when it's time to land and perhaps maybe not to hit into other planes in the sky, and then this interview is for you. We're speaking to an electronics engineer who has worked in the radar field for many, many years at South Africa's prestigious air traffic and navigation services, ATNS. With me in studio is Peter Charles Murray, who has just retired from ATNS, but is going to explain to us uh, how it was, you know, working with all this complicated language. Mr. Moray, it's a very good morning to you and thank you so much for coming through. Uh, good morning, Kalesa, and good morning to your listeners. Right. First question. How does South Africa's air traffic network work? Uh, the network works uh, on, a, on a basis of a cooperative arrangement between airports, airlines who fly the airplanes, and the air navigation service provider, which in this case is ATNS. Uh, to get an aircraft from Johannesburg to Cape Town, for example, would mean that the aircraft operator would file a flight plan, which indicates how the aircraft wishes to fly from Johannesburg to Cape Town, what time it would like to depart, what time it plans to land, and what route it's going to follow. Okay. ATNS, as the air navigation service provider, takes that flight plan, plus all the other flight plans from all the other aircraft that wish to fly on that day, in those time slots mm. and coordinates all of those together so that you never end up with two aircraft in the same place at the same time at the same height. Mm -hmm. so but doesn't it happen in some instances, especially where there are delays? Because I remember at one time I was flying from Bloom to Jobeck and we were told that we, we had to take some rounds, you know, in the sky so that one plane can be able to land before us. So does it happen that uh, in some instances there are such clashes maybe? Yes, there is... Uh, you know, um, it, the flight plan is an estimate, yeah. and in real time, as the aircraft flies, they fly at different speeds, you get weather effects, uh, there may be turbulence, there may be high winds, and as a result, aircraft can arrive at a particular point, which mm. is a point where they are coordinated to land on a runway at a similar time. And then the air traffic controllers will take steps to ensure that the aircraft are safely separated and can land on the runway in the most efficient and effective manner possible. All right. So they yeah. usually know that beforehand. They know that beforehand. Mm. So your air, your air traffic controllers make use of uh, systems and technologies. So they have a picture in front of them showing the whole of the South African airspace with all the aircraft that are flying, uh, the altitudes at which they are flying, the speeds at which they are flying, and they have available to them the routes that the aircraft are flying as well. So using this information, they can make decisions as to which direction to turn an aircraft in, what level or altitude to climb it to or to descend it to, and how to sequence the aircraft in the most efficient manner to land on the runway of the airport to which they are destined to All land. Right. Are there shortcuts when flying an aeroplane? Maybe, you know, if you decide to take a shorter route, is there such a thing as a shorter route? <laughs> or do they, they really have to stick to the plan? No, I think the, the, it's, it's, it's a plan. Yeah. The route is planned. Um, and the routes are planned to be the shortest possible. Okay. Not necessarily in distance, but in time. In time. So that uh, the, the aircraft spends the least amount of time in the air. Um, shortcuts, yes, the routes are planned. However, if uh, it will make the overall system more efficient, the air traffic controller can ask the pilot to change route and go in a different direction, but still with the objective of getting to the destination as quickly as possible. Safe, so, safe, so. So the big question, obviously, uh, Mr. Murray, is how do you prevent planes from falling out of the sky? How does it happen? Well... I think the uh, air navigation service, service provider doesn't do that. Yeah, yeah. But they keep the aeroplane safely, safely apart. Safely, yeah. So they do that by uh, making sure that the, the separation standards, which is the distance that must be between aircraft and also the altitudes, are always monitored and coordinated. Mm -hmm. uh, and these standards say that an aircraft will never be closer than three nautical miles in certain airspaces, otherwise five, and they will always be 1,000 feet apart. Uh, aircraft also have technology on board which monitors aircraft in close proximity to them. So that if you end up in a situation where there is an error, yeah. the pilot, together with the systems on his aircraft, also keeps a watch for what is going on in the airspace around them. And they can then also take action to prevent a collision. Mm. But 
the, the system and the network is planned such that that is very rare. Yeah. And uh, you know, in, in South Africa... Uh, we don't have a lot of those cases. We don't, we don't have many mm. cases where there is a reduction in separation. Mm. Mm. Now, I've introduced you as an electronics engineer, obviously a former because you've just uh, <laughs> retired from ATN as and yes. with 35 years experience. So how, how, how was the journey for you? Was it interesting? I, I think it was because yes. you're still in the industry, you've retired, yes. but you're still oh. doing some related yeah. work. I'm still in the industry. I, I think it's true to say I've had 35 years of fun. fun. Um, there hasn't been a morning when I haven't uh, woken up and looked forward to go to work. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I think the industry is such that it's very dynamic, it's very complex, uh, there is a, a, a host of new technologies which are introduced all the time yeah. and uh, the uh, environment in which you operate is very dynamic. Mm -hmm. So there's always new challenges, new uh, 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 services that need to be introduced and you have the opportunity to contribute to building this overall system, mm. which is really the largest coordinated and integrated transport system in the world. You know, many people, billions of people fly yeah. every year yeah. and uh, they all fly safely. Mm. Uh, so, so it's a huge responsibility it's a, it's a in huge your hands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm one of the members of the team. Yeah. But uh, certainly, you know, it's, it's a, a team-based team effort. Mm. And uh, the system is safe and works because every member of the team knows exactly what they have to do mm. and they execute their tasks to the required standards to mm. make sure that uh, when you fly, you can get there safely. Safely, safely. But talking about technology, I mean, we do know that it evolves uh, technology and innovation. We, we, mm. we see a whole lot of um, you know, new technology coming into effect. How, how, how did you go about adopting well, the, the, the important thing about technology in aviation is that it needs to be a globally agreed technology so that you don't have different types of technology yeah. deployed in different parts of the world or different parts of the country. And this technology is all standardized so that everybody has the same type of equipment that has the same capabilities and can be used wherever you are. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's a process of evolution it's agreed internationally and once that is done it is then on the, the the responsibility of the state or its delegated service provider to implement this technology from time to time so for example in surveillance systems uh, radar systems used to be based on the ground yeah. um, that has evolved to cooperative surveillance where there's a piece of equipment on the aircraft that the ground system interrogates and it sends information back related to that aircraft and that is now getting to the point where aircraft are broadcasting their position mm. and this can be received and used. I'm sure you've seen some of the uh, web-based apps yeah. where you can see the aircraft all over the world flying. Mm -hmm. So that's a surveillance technology which is also has been standardized, standardized and introduced in the last few years. But in terms of the demand, are people really interested in this field? It's a specialized field, yeah. but the, the industry as a whole has tens of thousands of employees. In South Africa, we, uh, in ATNS, uh, prior to my leaving there, you know, we have over a thousand people, yeah. uh, of which more than half of those are in the air traffic services component, making sure that aircraft can move effectively mm -hmm. and efficiently. Mm -hmm. And at that time, we also train more than uh, 80, 60 to 80 new people a year. So it shows the interest so, is so there. So there is an interest yeah, there. Yeah. Um, one right. thing is, it's, it's an industry in which you uh, uh, need passionate people yeah. because of the be safety component. Yeah. Yeah. And, All right, uh, Mr. Murray, yeah. that's where we're going to leave it for this morning, but thank you so much for sharing the knowledge with us. We appreciate yeah. it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. There you have it. That's uh, Peter Charles Murray, who has just retired from ATNS. He's a former electronics engineer. He has retired after 35 years working in this industry, but he's still doing some uh, part-time jobs, like you said. He's still in this industry. Well, we're taking a break. When we come back, Money Life continues.